research approaches. There are different ways of gathering data. Observational, ethnographic, focus group survey, behavioral, cup card, experimental. My favorite two personally are observational and ethnographic. Observational is so important. Viewing people in their natural state of how they're shopping or how they're living in their house or whatever it is. And this is how you're able to come up with products that are groundbreaking. If you again, if you think of products like the iPhone, if you were to absorb observe people prior to using the iPhone, you would realize that if we can make a product that has you know a camera, videos, talking, the internet all in one machine, this will be groundbreaking and it will change the way that people live. Or Airbnb and how if you go back to Airbnb and you say like, well, you know what? It's not that groundbreaking because we observed people who regularly traveled through couch surfing and had no issue staying in other people's homes. Why not we let those people spend money and receive money for doing the same thing? You have focus groups, which is gathering groups of people and asking them questions specific to the data that you're trying to collect. Surveys, behavior, which is like the Cub card or your Starbucks card, your point card, wherever it's at, and then experimental. We talked about focus groups. Focus groups is a great way to get people or your potential customers to act it, ask them specific questions. One of the problems with focus groups, of course, is that they know they're in there to gather research, and so their answers might not be as natural as you hope them to be. They could be skewed one way or the other, because, of course, they're sitting in a room and they, they're trying to be natural, but they're also not going to be mean to you. They will generally give you the answers that they maybe hope that you're looking for. Some research instruments we have are questionnaires, qualitative measures, and technological devices. So we're going to get into questionnaires in a few slides and qualitative measures. One of the difference between questionnaires and qualitative measures is that questionnaires is an easy way to collect data and then put it into like a statistical type of way so you can gather the data and crunch numbers very quickly where qualitative data requires people to go through the information and try to somehow make sense of it all so that you can understand the best way to go. Quali some qualitative techniques I like word associations, visualizations, projective techniques, laddering, meaning like ask why, 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 sort of like a child. But one of my favorites is word associations. You look at different pictures and things like that and you say, well, what do you see? And here's an example. If we showed a picture of this and we said, what do you see in the picture? You can understand that not everyone sees the same way that you see the picture. And this allows you to understand what people view of maybe your products or your brand or situations that you use your products in. And the last thing we'll do for this section is questionnaire do's and don'ts. A few ensure questions are free of bias, make questions simple, make questions specific, avoid jargon. The reason you don't avoid jargon is because in your company, everyone knows what that means, but outside in the real world, people often have no idea what that means, which the same goes for then, of course, sophisticated words and ambiguous words. It confuses people. And when people are confused, they don't want to answer your questions. Avoid negatives, avoid hypotheticals, avoid words that could be misheard, use response bands, use mutually exclusive categories and allow for other and fixed responses. So some basic rules to follow and will just allow your questionnaires to give you better data so that you can come up with, once it's analyzed, you can have better information to become more successful.